What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And I actually had a subscriber shoot me this uh, link and tell me about this story that I hadn't heard of before and ask me some questions about how I thought it was going to go. And so the story is in Sunnyside, Washington, which is in Yakima County, um, they have this single to mile celebration, I guess, from from Friday through Sunday. So it started on on uh, Friday, the 6th, I believe. And they were setting up for this little fair, whatnot. That's what the picture is on the thumbnail. And a 13 year old boy who police allege is a South Sider, but but I don't take their word for it. They call a lot of people gang members when they're not. Uh, was with some of his friends and seeing some kind of rivals. I, I don't know who who they were and started shooting, right? And he hit people, but he didn't hit the rivals. Um, he hit a 35 year old guy. Um, a 12 year old boy was hit in the face. Uh, there was a six year old girl hitting the legs and then a couple other teenagers were, were hitting the legs. And so some of those people at least are obviously not gang members, right? Uh, 13 is young, 16, I mean, six year old girl, it's not happening. So the police aren't saying whether any of them have affiliations or not, who knows? Um, but some of them were, were obviously not engaged. So what happens afterwards is they see five people, they see a group of five people running afterwards and they run and they go to this house and SWAT team, everybody else surrounds the house. The five kids come out all five of those kids are released to their parents that day. And uh, it, it looks like, it sounds like, though, though I can't prove it, that they probably gave up the goods on the shooter, right? And so the shooter apparently ran to a, a grocery store and called his mom and his mom came and picked him up. And the thought is that he tossed the gun on the way. And so they wind up snatching up the kid. The mom says he's been at home since, since before the shooting. He's been at home all day. So no way that happened. So I expect her to face some charges. But Washington has gone through some interesting law changes that really impact this kid. Um, and, and so the question is, can he be charged as an adult? And if it were the past, um, yes. But Washington passed this thing called Senate Bill 6160. And the way it used to work is uh, if a juvenile was charged with a serious violent crime, and I think they were 15 or, or um, you know, 16 or 17, around that age, then they would automatically get kicked to adult court, right? And so they changed it. And they said, now, if you wanna kick a juvenile to adult court, they have to have a hearing first. You have to have a hearing in front of a judge. The judge has to agree that they should move on to adult court, right? Now there's no age limit in Washington as to who can go to adult court necessarily. But the factors most likely to get somebody held over is you're at least 15 years or older and you have a serious, serious violent offense, which was the standard before. Um, you are at least 14 years old and you're facing charges of murder in the first degree or murder in the second degree, <clears throat> or, um, or you're any age and you're facing charges for um, basically an assault in custody. So assault in juvenile hall, when you were already sentenced to stay there till you were 21. The law used to be juveniles only stayed in juvenile detention till 21. Another part of the Senate bill is that they made it where juveniles can stay in juvenile detention until 25. So all that happens before this kid, kid gets off, right? So right now he's facing five counts of first degree uh, assault. Right. And and there might be other counts that they add to that. It's interesting because he has bail and, and I'm not too familiar with juveniles in juvenile court uh, getting bail. And so but his bail is a half a million dollars. And uh, there's no reason to think that that he's going to make that bill. And so what is he looking at? Right. Uh, he can face anywhere from two to two and a half years for a class A juvenile offense. And so you multiply that by five and and he can stay there until he's 25, right? Um, which is what I suspect is gonna happen if the kid is found guilty of what they're accusing him of doing. They still haven't found a gun uh, as far as I know. And so some thoughts on this, right? You know, there's a saying of being young and dumb and, and it really holds true in this one. He's a teenager 
he, I don't know the guy, obviously, but, you know, he wants to prove himself. Maybe there's some rivals that have hurt him or hurt his loved ones, and so he wants his get-backs. Maybe he's just trying to show off, you know, whatever. The kid's not crazy. The kid is 13 years old. So odds are, he's not crazy. He's 13. 13 13-year-olds do stupid stuff. 13-year-olds in gang-influenced environments can do stupid stuff that can cost them, you know, the rest of their life or a big chunk of their life and can also bring harm on other people. Um, I don't see, and I've done a lot of research on juvenile offenders, in particular juveniles, you know, charged with murder and younger juveniles. And the fact is, more often than not, most of the time, they get a little bit older, they get around the age of 25, and, and they're like, man, they're a radically different person. And that's without therapy, that's without intervention, that's without anything, that's just throwing them in a cell. Um, and, and they don't fully realize what they're doing at 13. We can say that kids do, and kids need to be held responsible and don't be soft on crime, but, but think about it. You know, uh, uh, I have a 14 year old daughter and while I have no thought that she's going to go run around and shoot people um, because I'm raising her in a different environment than where I was raised. But but she doesn't fully understand the consequences of her actions on a grand scale. She knows if she doesn't do her chores, she's going to lose her phone, right? But she doesn't see the big, big, big picture, right? How an argument can lead to death. You know what I mean? That That's a concept that's, that's too far for her. And, uh, and and so it's unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate for the victims. I don't want to ignore them. Man, that sucks. You're, you're trying to go to a, a festival. You're trying to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. And, and next thing you know, you're getting shot. And I'm sure it was terrifying for the other people that were around there. I'm willing to bet there was other kids around there. And, and so, yeah, man, that's scary. So I would be very scared if I was a parent at that event and that happened. And so I don't want to ignore the trauma that they went through. Uh, this kid, man, uh, he, he's going to regret what, what he did, no matter what consequence he gets. I think if you told him right now you're going to do the rest of your life in jail, he can't fathom what that really looks like. You know what I mean? He's a child, man. He's a child. And so there has to be some consequences. You know, you, you should not be able to, to roll around and shoot people. And because you're young, it's okay. You know, so I'm, I'm not saying that, but I hope that the kid gets the help that he needs so that when he comes back out in society, which I suspect that, that he will, um, that, you know, that he can get his head on straight, man, and, and be a positive contributing person, you know, that maybe he can use his story to help other folks that were his age, um, you know, understand and kind of some reality checks and help them at least plant those seeds. A lot of times that's the best we could do in community work is plant the seed. Some plant it, some water it, some get to see it grow. That's just how it goes, man. But, um, but we're all gardeners to an extent, right? We all have a role to play. And for the mom, she's going to be in trouble. You know, uh, I would expect her to face some charges, especially because it's so public that she she defended her child with the with what's a dishonest statement. She was paranoid. She was, I can imagine as a parent, man, uh, um, you're scared to death. You don't want to lose your boy. You, you don't see a little boy as some gangster or some monster, or whatever, man. That's your kid that you changed for diapers when they were young. You know, um, that that's been your pride and joy all your life. You know assuming that she's a parent any like you know like parents I know and and the kind of parent I am and so yeah you I think your knee-jerk reaction as a parent is to protect your kid figure out the details later we can work on that later but right now I have to protect my child and and, and so it's unfortunate man he, the boy put his mom in in a no-win situation you know and so and she's gonna do the time with this kid. And, and she has to reconcile. And she's gonna have thoughts. What did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? What was this? What was that? Because as parents, when our kids do just way out stuff, um, we tend to, to reflect back on ourselves like, who raised you? You know what I mean? And man, I raised you. 
So how the hell, I didn't raise you like that. Where did I go wrong? And and so it's high stakes. But um, but anyways, that's it, man. Help others move in excellence. Help yourself at the same time. Um, don't don't let some temporary uh, stress lead you to make something that ends up being a permanent decision. And and that's what you know to some degree this kid did. I guess the saving grace is nobody died. You know. Um, so anyways, man, you guys take care. There's a lot of different content around here. Check it out. And we'll uh, we'll tap in again another day.